Welcome to the show. Today's guest is Mr. Lucario, the bad boy of the dating game. And he talks relationships, rejection, and standing in your truth. Coming live from the Fly Studio in Commerce Township, it's the Fulfilling Life's Yearnings Podcast! And I'm your host, Blake Giovanni Thomas Sule. And if you're ready to be your best by writing the script of your life to whatever you want it to be and taking action on your dreams, then this is the podcast for you. It's time to enter the fly zone. Hey, what's up? It's the fly host you love the most, and I'm back with another episode of Fulfilling Life's Yearnings. Today I have another special guest for you. He goes by the name of Mr. Lucario, and Mr. Lucario is, you know, a relationship expert, but he also does a multiple uh, other things as well, and I will let him explain that. But first of all, Mr. Lucario, welcome to the show. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for having me. I appreciate it, man. Absolutely. So just as we were talking beforehand, um, before we got started here today, you you know, have like similar interests as far as, you know, uh, motivating and inspiring people to, you know, be the best of themselves and to do the things that they want in life. But um, just for starters, can you talk about, you know, your background, uh, uh, who you are and where you come from? Yeah. So, um, so basically I mean, my name is Mr. Lucario. I'm a dating and life coach. And um, so I've been coaching for the past eight years and, you know, I got into coaching actually because, you know, um, I used to basically be a, a, a serial dater. So I used to date around a lot. And I had like, you know, a lot of friends who were interested in, you know, talking to girls and getting with girls, but they were always scared. They were they didn't know what to really do. Right. So since I, you know, since I sort of had, you know, some some knowledge of the, the situation and also the way I got the knowledge is that I learned from other people that I used to, um, you know, live with and used to be around my way and everything. And I started to help my friends out. And as soon as I started doing that, one of our friends, who's also my business partner now, um, he was like, hey, you should do this, you know, for real, like help other guys out, you know, as a career. And then so I started helping out guys and I started helping out women. And then, you know, I just I, what I first really did was I started making videos on YouTube. And through that, I was getting a lot of emails from YouTube from people that wanted help. And then it kind of snowballed from there. And I started doing, uh, you know, writing books. I started writing articles for different websites. Um, I started doing, you know, in-person coaching and started, you know, speaking at different events and stuff like that. So it kind of just snowballed from there. And then I just kept it going. And I, I just like the fact that I'm able to, you know, help people because that was always like a, a thing where I, when I was growing up, I felt like, you know, I wanted help as much as I can. And mm-hmm. I, and I appreciated the help that I've gotten from other people. So I just wanted to sort of like, you know, do that for other people also, you know what I mean? And I know how much it, it, it helped me out to get help when I needed it. So I wanted to, you know, spread, you know, spread the, the love around, you, you know what I mean? Right, right. Definitely. And that's interesting that you say that because I guess when I, when I think of, you know, uh, you know, like life coaching, not not necessarily life coaching itself, but the part about dating. And mm-hmm. I'm not sure if this is how it is, but it sometimes seems that, you know, someone who's doing something like that, you know, they don't mm-hmm. want to share right. what, what, you know, <laughs> know, what they're doing. And they'll just say, oh, man, it's nothing. It's, you know, I don't know. And they just kind of brush it off so they can, I guess, in essence, you know, have all the fun for themselves or, or however. But that's really cool right. that, that, you know, you're, you know, you're giving back and, and showing other people how to do that. Uh, for for this, when we're on here today, I'm actually kind of curious, you know, to kind of dive in there because I know that, you know, uh, relationships and, and, and the, the work you do as a life coach and a dating coach, you know, they parallel with, mm. with you know, fulfilling your purpose. What what can you tell us about, you know, how the similarities that you see in helping people, you know, um, you know, whether they want to date more or have, you know, better relationships? What are those similarities that that you could talk about that help people actually in their day to day life as far as confidence and going after what they want? Mm. Well, the thing the thing I think most people got to realize is that, um, you know, a lot of the, everything is basically a relationship. You, mm-hmm. you have you, you have a relationship with yourself. You have a relationship with, 
you know, uh, your boyfriend or girlfriend, you have a relationship with the people at your job. Even when you go to the store and you buy a bag of chips, you're having a relationship with the person at the counter. You're giving them money. They, you know, they're giving you the, the product. That's a relationship right there that you're having back and forth with that person. So the thing is, is that, you know, I think what, what happens is, is that a lot of people in society don't realize that, you know, in order to actually have fulfilling relationships, just generally, you know, first you have to have a, a good relationship with yourself and be comfortable with yourself and be comfortable with what, what you want, what you're about, who you are, and, you know, and stick with that and not be ashamed of what you want and, and what you're about. Because I think a lot of times, you know, in life, we're taught that we, we're, we're supposed to do certain things or we should do certain things based off of maybe your parents who are telling you, hey, this is the wrong or right thing to do. Or, mm -hmm. you know, society is telling you this is the cool thing now or this is not the cool thing now. And I think we consult too much with what society is telling us versus what's deep inside of ourselves and then figuring out like exactly what's right for you. You know what I mean? And I think right. that's the the part that people are, you know, missing out on. And that's kind of like what I, I like to focus on, you know, with coaching and, and especially, you know, specifically also with, you know, dating and relationships, because I think a lot of people, you know, they have the, uh, uh, a wrong idea specifically of what it means to have healthy relationships and stuff like that based off of like things they've been hearing or seeing in TV movies and all this mm -hmm. other craziness, you know? Right. So, that, yeah. so that's, that, that's a good point. And what would someone have to do to be, be able to, you know, start, <clears throat> excuse me, having that, that better relationship with, the, with themselves? You, I know you mentioned, you know, we, we're listening to society too much and, and, and trying mm. to save face with other people or trying to mm. pres uh, present that almost a uh, fake facade in order to right. get, the, get the approval from others. What, what would be some key things that you would, you know, start someone out with and saying, look, this is a, a good direction to start moving into to be, you know, more true to yourself. Right. I think, I think the, 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 the thing that people got to understand is that you have to sort of have a, a an awareness of, mm. of what you're, of what you want or what, or what you're about. Basically like, so for example, you know, there's like a, you have a gut feeling about mm. certain things you have, like, you know, people have a passion for certain things, but sometimes you might not act on your your gut feeling or your passion because of you know like you you're probably scared of what uh, other people are going to think about what you like to do so like so let's say for example you might have a a person who let's say their dad is a doctor or something and their dad right. really wants them to be a doctor but mm -hmm. they're like you know they're not interested in that they're, they really like you know cooking they want to be a chef you know what i mean right. so like instead of you know, trying to pursue being a chef, they'll just be a doctor to please their dad. You know what I mean? But it's right, like, right. you're not really living, you're not really getting that, that pay. you're not really excited to wake up in the morning because you're not really uh, doing what you want to do. So if you're aware of the fact that you have this passion to, to be a chef and then you go in the direction, then, you know, that's the type of thing that you really need to do no matter what anyone else is thinking because you got to understand it's your life. You live this l life one time as far as we know. You know what I mean? And right. And that's what it is that you're going to be doing. So it's better to do that and, 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 you know, live that instead of being scared of like, like what everybody else is going to think, because no matter what you do, someone's going to, everyone's going to think about something about it. Some people are going to like it. Some people are not. So that doesn't really matter. What really matters is you fulfilling what you're trying to do. And because you're the one that has to live with yourself, you understand? You're the one who has to wake up in the morning, look at yourself in the mirror and say, am I doing what I want to do? Am I being who I want to be. And that's really, you know, the most important thing. Right. And I think that's uh, dead on. And so my question is for you, and you mm -hmm. talked about your previous experience, and then I'll segue to another question. But uh, for you growing up, were were you always able to do these things? Uh, or did these uh, begin to develop for you as you got older? Oh, no, that's the, that's the interesting part. When I was younger, and this, mm -hmm. this, is, this is weird. I, I, I'm not sure if this happens to most people, but I remember being, um, you know, when I was maybe about like 13 or 14, right. I would constantly like ask questions about life. Like I would be like, you know, what, what's the purpose? What am I supposed to be doing? What am I, and you know, what am I going to do when I get older? What, what's going to happen? Or am I doing the right thing? Like I would constantly always be thinking of what am I specifically supposed to be doing mm -hmm. in life? Because I was, I was confused. Like, I didn't know like, it's, you know, where to go, what to do, to go left, to go right. I didn't know like what, what, like I actually thought this is the weirdest thing. I actually thought there was like a, a manual or some blueprint that you're supposed to right. follow <laughs> to, to be a human being. Yeah. And I just didn't, I didn't understand like what it was. And I thought everybody else sort of knew. And I just was 
in the dark or whatever. Right. So I used to just follow. I, what I would do is I would just follow um, other people, uh, you know, and and copy and mimic other people. And I wasn't. I I never thought about what I kind of wanted or liked. Okay. I even remember when I was in school, I had a best friend who he uh he used to um we would like have you know write essays or whatever. So I would look at his handwriting and he had a very neat handwriting. So I would mimic his handwriting to try to write just like him, just like the way he would structure his his words. Like that's how crazy it was where I was just following everybody and wow. everything. Right. So I didn't have like a you know and then it was like I, I noticed that there were certain things that I wanted to do you know, or certain things that I wanted to express because I used to rap. I used to do like um, mixtapes or whatever. And I used mm-hmm. to do all these other different things. And I started to come into my own thing because I started to say, you know what, what do I actually want to do and actually honor that and just do it. And a lot of things I was scared to do and a lot of things I was scared to ask and a lot of things I was scared to say and a lot of opinions I had, I was scared to just put out there mm-hmm. because I was, I was nervous about people not liking me or people you know, making fun of me or, you know what I mean? Like, so after a while, you know, I know I started to realize like, you know what, like all of this stuff is nonsense. Like to, in order for you to really just be happy and to be content, you have to fully be yourself. And Mm -hmm. and it takes time for you to actually understand who you are, because truthfully, a lot of the stuff that you're thinking about or dealing with or, 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 you know, um, coming into contact with, uh, it, it, it has an influence on how you think and how you act. So, you a lot of stuff you think you want you're conditioned to feel like you need that or mm-hmm. to feel like that's what that's who you really are but if you have to really step back and just really be aware of hey if, is what i'm thinking or what i want really what i want or is this something that i've been influenced to like you understand or is right. it really what i'm trying to do you know what i mean so it, yeah, it definitely. takes it takes time you know yeah <laughs> definitely that, takes time. yeah, I, yeah I, I get that as well because i mean you were just saying that sounded like me when I was 13, around the same age, just, just trying to figure out, you know, why are we here? What am I supposed right. to be doing? And, and start having that, 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 that self-introspective period of my life where I was like, okay, what, what direction do I want to go in? And, and it's one of those things, and maybe you can attest to this too, that even once you start, you know, thinking or having an inclination of what direction you want to move in, there, there are always other uh, right. uh, things that come up along along the way, so it's not like right. you you get on the on the track and you just stay and on. And it's just it's just, right. You just keep taking that same track till it ends. Nah, sometimes it might you know veer off to a different course for a second, and but all, uh, uh, along the while still having that 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 main focus of what you have and just being flexible enough to adjust and change as time right. goes on. Exactly, exactly. No, it's right. And it's and it's about it's about maintenance too. I think mm-hmm. uh, you know, you have to you have to get in, into a state of maintaining um your thought process. And I and I think that's and that's what goes with, along with even coaching and stuff. Like when I, you know, coach with dating and relationships or, or whatever, it's it's a thing where you have to consistently um, you know, um keep your mind fresh and consistently uh, you know, keep thinking and, and working on yourself because it's the same with thing is like if you go to the gym you know you have to keep going to the gym to maintain that body to maintain your health it's not mm-hmm. like you just you just say oh I, I figured out that i'm supposed to do sit-ups and pull-ups and i did it one time and now everything is perfect no you have to keep doing that so it's the same way where like you were saying you're you're sort of refreshing your mind is sort of like adjusting and that goes along with you going through everyday life because you know you, you you'll probably understand certain things you, you'll learn certain things but then real life is happening at the same time while you're mm-hmm. understanding these things so you you're consistently adjusting and shifting your perspective so that you can you know sort of like you know understand more and understand yourself more and that comes with like just maintaining you know and and keeping that going this is the reason why a lot of people like to hear you know motivational speakers and you know listen to like you know positive thinking audio tapes and stuff is because you're you have to constantly refresh your mind it's the same way where if if a person has like if a person's religious and they go to like bible study like all bible study is is to for the for like if you're a christian or something to refresh your mind on your christian values you Mm -hmm. see what i'm saying so it's the same thing the same thing you know what i mean yeah and it's one of those and by the way that made me laugh for a second when you talked about just just having to do one sit up could you imagine right if, if, if that's all you needed to do exactly that would be the best <laughs> like, oh i just i did it Every, right. everything is perfect you know everything is good it's it's all good everything's perfect i'm done you know man, man that that would be crazy but uh that's right though just 
and it seems like it's one of those things that people don't realize is that you know there's there's certain things that were necessarily uh already indoctrinated into that we tend to follow right. more often like you know the, I always look back to like the matrix when when neo's offered you know the 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 blue or the red pill take the blue pill right. and he wakes back up in the morning and then he can continue going on oblivious to the fact that you know he should be tuning into stuff to make himself better or taking that red pill and he can mm-hmm. d- discover all the stuff that he didn't know about himself but like you mentioned right. earlier he had that that deep gut feeling all along right and and, and you know what's crazy is that uh, what happens is a lot of people don't want to wake up you mm-hmm. understand like a lot of people don't because the thing is waking up is is hard it's it's like one of those things where once you once you know once you know something or once you know better it's you can't unlearn that like mm-hmm. you know it now like it's like so now you're not you're not as ignorant as you were w- before you understand so now that right. you know it it becomes a responsibility for you to to understand, you know, a better direction of going, you understand? And a, and a lot mm-hmm. of people don't necessarily want to do that because it takes work, you know what yeah, I mean? So oh, yeah. that's the thing that happens. Oh, yeah. So I, I don't, uh-huh. so my, my next one is, uh, it's about, you know, now that we're at this point, you know, we're, we're becoming aware and, and now we're maintaining and, and, and we're, we're awake, right? And now mm-hmm. we're trying to be out there now in the real world. And I, and I think the best parallel that you could probably use for this is, when as a guy or a woman and and you're trying to talk to people of you know the opposite sex or what have you and and right there you have like a real life in your face in this moment you're either going to succeed <coughs> or you're going to fail can you uh can you talk right. about you know how you deal with failure and 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 what that looks like you talking about like rejection and stuff like that or right right rejection yeah exactly you're right yeah, because, well, the thing is, you know, it's funny because, you know, that's a, like a big issue that a lot of people have, you know, men and women mm-hmm. in in dating is, you know, guys more so rejection from the front end where they're trying to, you know, talk to a girl or get with a girl or whatever. Right. They're nervous about that. And women, you know, a lot of times receive rejection more on the back end, meaning they'll get with a guy and maybe, you know, they'll have sex or whatever and then he'll never call her again, you know, stuff like mm-hmm. that. So. With, 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 with both situations with rejection, you know, I always say like, you know, rejection is good because it's really part of the process. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's part of what needs to happen in order for you to get, um, you know, into situations that you really want in, in order to get, you know, um, you know, actually beneficial situations. It's the same. It's the same way if you were, let's say, uh, a person running a business mm-hmm. or, you know, a person trying to sell, you know, encyclopedias or whatever, like you're going to get people who are going to re- get, you know, reject you. But in order for, in order for you to get that sale, in order for you to get that thing going, it's, 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 it's something that has to happen. Like it's impossible for you not to get rejected. And I think it, once people realize that, you know, it's part of it, then it becomes something where you're not, you don't really fear it because you know that it's part of the process and it's part of some, it's part of something that actually, uh, you know, helps you build character right. because it's one of those things where, you know, in order for you to even appreciate, you know, what you do get, you have to be able to go through those, those situations in order to really appreciate when you actually make something happen. Because if you just got things like every time you walked up to somebody Everybody was like, yeah, you know, everything was like just flowing like exactly like that. You know, the, the, that appreciation for it, it, you wouldn't have that same perspective mm-hmm. of understanding like I appreciate this because I know what I had to do to get it. I appreciate this because of the work that I had to put in and the 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 know-how and the 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 you know, all the energy that I had to do to to get where I'm at. And I think, you know, that perspective, you know, is important for people to have because if they didn't have it, they it, it would be impossible for you to really appreciate when you get it and to maintain it because it's like, well, you know, it doesn't matter. I could just go get another thing and another thing, another thing right, because right. you don't have that balance of understanding what it took to get where you're at. You know what I mean? It's that yeah. type of thing. So, and I think people just need to understand that, you know, rejection is not anything you necessarily need to fear, but understand that it's part of the whole process in order to get the 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 benefits of what you're trying to do you know what i mean it's, oh, it's just that's all it is you know what mm-hmm. i mean so, and so and you can't you can't escape it you know right it's always there and, and that, that's that's a good point but i wanted to ask to you know where from your insight <laughs> does uh that fear of uh rejection come from you know you know 
I, I tend to think it comes from, you even stated it earlier, uh, just wanting to you know look good in front of other people. And then also right. possibly from, uh, I think another major part is, you know, schooling and just how that works with, with you know, failing. I guess people assume that failing means that you're doing something bad. Where do you think it right. tends to uh, come from? Right. And, and you know what it is? I think the fear, a, a lot of it mostly comes from, um, you know, it comes from people's ego, okay. basically. Like, mm. it's really, it's really, a, you know, because truthfully, a lot of people look at um, things happening outside of them as a barometer or as or, or as something to dictate how valuable they are okay. or, or also dictate their level of happiness. You understand? And so. A person will say, well, I need this person to like me. Or I need this person to not reject me because if they do reject me, then that means I'm not good enough. That mm-hmm. means, you know, I'm not, um, you know, uh, sexy or I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm a loser, whatever it is. So people attach, um, you know, the outcomes of what's going on, you know, outside of themselves to, you know, reflect on their value. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it has really nothing to do with that. So I think people, they really fear you know, the rejection because they're making the rejection, um, you know, dictate their value. And I think that that's a big mistake that people make a lot of times. And it's, and, and the funny part is, is that, you know, people will also look for the happiness through that because they figure, well, if this person likes me, then I'm going to be happy. If this person doesn't like me, I'm going to be upset. And now you're making all these outside things, you know, dictate your, your level of happiness. Mm. And the thing is, you know, you know, even when we talk about like happiness, like it's weird because it's hard to technically say what, you know, that is like happiness is, but I can, right, you know, right. it's easy to say what happiness isn't and mm-hmm. happiness isn't you, you know, thinking that, you know, uh, people liking you is going to make you happy or people not liking you is going to make you sad. You know what I mean? So it's, it's that thing with the ego that makes people fear the rejection and which also makes people you know, um, stagnant. It doesn't make you move and make things happen because since you're so in fear of that rejection, you're you're not gonna move. You're not gonna say anything because it's it, to you. It's better to uh, not see what's gonna happen and not talk to that girl or not deal with that guy, whatever it is, than to uh, uh, you know try to deal with them and then that person doesn't you know want to get with you. You understand? Like they right, rather right. not not know about it. You know what I mean? So they'll, they'll just won't do anything. Mm-hmm. And that's when you really lose because now you're not making anything happen. You know what I mean? Right. It's that, it's that analysis paralysis. And, you know, right. I, I admit that you know, when I was younger, you know, I, I was definitely like that, you know, wanted to save face and, mm-hmm. and then didn't want to see that failure. But I mean, as, as I've gotten older and realized that, you know, what, what the people around you are doing or, or what they think, you know, doesn't matter when you feel a certain way about yourself. And it, and it goes back to that, even what you talked right. about that 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 inner happiness and, and not basing basing our uh, joy for things or our joy for our own life based on external <coughs> things that will come and go. You know, they're not they're not gonna stay there. The only thing that I know I can control most of the times and all the times is how I feel internally, and that's not based upon the stuff that's happening outside. Right, exactly, exactly, and you know the thing is too is a lot of people are, we're we're it's so f- interesting like we're extremely conditioned mm-hmm. um, to to respond and react to certain things and and conditioned to uh, think that our happiness depends on on things like you know like there's really you know when it comes to happiness is really nothing that could make you happy you understand like I try to try to sort of explain that to people like you know your your happiness is like it's kind of like um, it, it's 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 sort of like a, a constant thing. I can say like it's a constant state of mind, a state of being right. that really can't be tampered with ever. Really, it's because it's it's sort of in you. It's just for you to sort of realize and recognize it and understand that nothing you know because because it's weird because there could be something tragic that can happen to you or mm-hmm. something terrible and you can still. It's weird to understand, but you could still be happy within the tragedy you can still be appreciative of what's you know uh of of like you know the things you still have in the the messed up situation and i think it's more of a state of mind it's like looking it's like how you respond to the 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 things that are going on how you react to that 
determines how you're going to feel and determines your level of happiness, you understand, and right. th- your perspective on things. And I think that, you know, that's a big thing that is hard for people to, to understand because we're so conditioned to think, okay, well, when this happens, I'm going to be uh, upset. And when things happen, I'm going to be sad. And it's okay, you know, you're going to be upset sometimes, you're going to be sad, there's going to be things that, that go down, mm-hmm. but it's a, it's, a, it's a different level of awareness to understand, you know, like, to understand that, you know, that that your happiness is not really going to be dependent on these things. Because when you think about your happiness being dependent on things, then you're in a constant, uh, you know, a motion of trying to get certain things or, or expecting certain things. And by you expecting everything to go down or you trying to get certain things to go down, mm-hmm. you're in a constant level of anxiety and stress trying to get those things. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like, uh, it's almost like kind of like weird. Like, how are you going to be happy trying to pursue happiness, which is people what people try to do because you can't pursue happiness, which mm-hmm. is a weird term. They're trying to pursue happiness, but in the pursuit, you're you're stressed out and you're anxious all the time. So while you're trying to get it, you're you're not happy. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So oh, instead yeah. of trying to do that, you can just be like, you know, if, when you realize or you're aware that you don't need to go anywhere to be happy. It's happiness is here. It's here right now within mm-hmm. you. That's when you understand what happiness is. You understand, and and it's and it and it's 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 a personal thing for each person because, like again, it's 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 hard to describe what happiness is because we're just talking in words. And I'm kind of getting all like philosophical on this, but words are very limiting. You understand yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so it's hard to it's it's hard to like describe what happiness is in words because whatever words I'm saying you're going to only you're only going to think about what the words I'm saying and it's only going to be your perception of what those words mean to mm-hmm. you and blah 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 you understand so it's more so of a feeling that you're going to get when you are more aware of yourself and your surroundings and you know the world and all the other stuff so let's talk about that for a moment you uh, you mentioned you know de- de- <coughs> in a way deconstructing what our uh our our trivial or or, or our normal relationships are with with uh, our surroundings, what what do you do to? I guess this is a kind of philosophical as well, or in, in thinking outside of the the bubble. But what is it that you do to? First of all, we already know about being aware now, and then so now once you're aware, how do you start? You know, uh, deconditioning yourself to uh, to base how you're feeling off of those things. Um, I I think I think you know. Like, because, you know, earlier when we were talking about just being aware and mm-hmm. awareness, and I mm-hmm. think I think that what most people need to realize is that a lot of the stuff that we are, that we care about or we think is important or we um, base our happiness around and all this other stuff, a lot of it is BS. You mm-hmm. understand what I'm saying? So, like, for example, like, you know, we were talking earlier about, like, people being scared to be themselves because of what what other people are going to think. And again, that's, that's an ego based thing because, you know, you're basing again, your well being and your happiness or your, your sense of, you know, uh, contentment with what other people are thinking. So you have to sort of like understand that you need to cut all those things out. You almost got to cut yourself. Um, um, you know, uh, I'd say like mentally from the garbage in the world, you understand mm-hmm. you have oh, to yeah. cut yourself out from the, you know, the the feeling of I need uh, these things to be happy and content. Like you don't, like I said, you don't need any of that. Not, like as long as you understand that you don't need anything to mm-hmm. be happy and to be content, then you'll start to realize that a lot of the stuff that you're worrying about, like even to the point where I was even go as far as to say, you know, a lot of people think they need to be loved by someone they feel like they need to be praised by people in order right. to be you don't need any of that they think oh i you ever hear the uh, people say you ever hear people say oh like they'll be in a, um a, a relationship with someone and they'll break up and then they'll say oh my god i can't live without this person i can't live without them i need them and i'm like well, well weren't you living with them bef- right. without them before you met them you understand <laughs> yeah, yeah you know what i'm saying yo, man, so this that, so that's, that's, that's the thing right that people don't realize right like there. they're saying these things and, and they don't you know what i mean <laughs> i can't live without you but yeah. Right. I'm like, how do you, how can you not live without this person, but you've been living without them, what, 20, 30 years before you met right. them? You understand? So that's what I'm saying. Like, you, you get attached.
that people understand it's the attachment of you get attached to these people, you get attached to these things, you get attached to the praise, you get attached to the the you know the kind words and all these other things that people are giving you to make you feel good. So when when people are saying other bad things, you get you know you're like oh well now I suck because people don't like me anymore, mm-hmm. or I can't live without you because you left me because you're so attached. So I think it's more a, a lot of it is the awareness of 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 who you are and also detaching yourself from the nonsense. That's because right. you got to understand that a lot of it, again, you're conditioned, just like you're conditioned to think that that person you can't live without is you're, you're conditioned to think you can't live without them. And that only came once you got attached to that person. Mm-hmm. So I think the, the you know, the to understand the happiness and understand like, you know, the well-being of, of or, 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 or having that contentment is to understand that, you know, or to be aware that you are attached be aware that you are you have that ego be aware that you know and also be aware that you know you don't want to wake up because a lot of even myself i don't i didn't want to wake up at a certain point i didn't want to i didn't want to uh you know certain things that i knew Mm -hmm. and i was just like oh man i wish i didn't know this you know what i mean I, i wish i wasn't aware of this because like they say ignorance is bliss like that's a really true statement like when you're ignorant of certain things it's like you know you have a, you know, your perspective is so different. And then now that you know certain things, it's just like, man, now that I know it, it's like, now I know I have to do better. Now I know I have to, like I said, maintain that, that state of mind. Mm -hmm. And it's like that, that takes work and that takes courage. You know what I mean? And and a lot of people aren't really ready to do that. You know what I'm saying? Oh man. man, So, you know, it's, 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 it's some deep stuff. And, And you know what I want to tell people too, is, um, to, so uh, is there's a dude um he's on he's on YouTube but he, uh-huh. he died years ago. This dude named um uh Anthony DeMello. Okay. I don't know if you ever heard of him. No, I haven't. He he talks a lot about this stuff. This is what and I I've, I've like, you know, researched a lot of but yeah, definitely check out Anthony DeMello. Like he goes deep into like all the stuff we're talking about, he goes deep into that. And this is stuff that I've been thinking about since I was like 13 and 14 when I was questioning a lot of things. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So the me- you said DeMello. Can you spell it, that? No, it's uh, it's Anthony and DeMello. is D-E and then M-E-L-L-O. Yeah. Okay. So An- Anthony DeMello. Yeah, definitely check him check him out. He has a lot of good stuff on, on, on YouTube, um, you know, about a lot of different things about like, you know, purpose and life and all this other stuff. But yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely dope. Okay, that's dope. Thanks for sharing that. And, and, Man, yeah, yeah. you know, we, we did get deep in it, and I, and I love that about the show because I, I just love hearing, you know, what, what other people have to, you know, say on this on this uh, topic as far as fulfilling life's yearnings. And I think, you know, you, you've added a lot of value to to the show. I did want to touch on and, and allow you to talk about, uh, <coughs> you know, the books you've written because I think there's, there's value that can be, you know, translated from those and uh, applicable to what we're doing here as well. Right. Um, yeah. So I actually I got three books mm-hmm. that I wrote. Um, one is called The Magnificent Ten Crucial Dating Tips for Men. Okay. And that actually, yeah, that one actually is free. It's a free um, book that people could get on my site at mrlocario.com. dot com, and you know you could download that and read that. It's a really quick, you know, short read or whatever. Okay. And then I I got um another book for women called It's Your Fault You're Single: Tips on Finding Mr. Right. And so that book is basically like, you know, to teach women that it's, you know, they can take responsibility for their love life. And I think because a lot of times um, women are, are taught just to be extremely passive all the time. And it's, and it's OK to, you know, be passive here and there and, right. you know, to be submissive here and there, or whatever. But it's, it's when it's when it comes time for a woman to actually like if she wants a husband or she wants a boyfriend, you know, I always say that no man is 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 responsible for you know being with you you know what i mean like mm-hmm. i always tell women like they're like because a lot i get a lot of women they're like oh can you teach these guys how to you know to be more to be more and committed and be more mature and i always say but why the, right. the question is why because why the thing is why would do they it's not it's not their responsibility like if you want something it's not their responsibility to give you what you want it's mm-hmm. responsible your responsibility to get it's for you to get what you want so you got to find a guy who's on the same page as you and who wants the same things as you. And that's when you would get that guy. So that kind of like, you know, talk about that in the book also. Okay. And, um, and my, my, my biggest selling book, which is called how to have sex with two women a day. That's for the guys. Right. And it's funny with that book is because when we were talking about earlier about, you know, being yourself and, um, and, uh, 
you know, and not being afraid to express yourself and everything. And when I when I first wrote that book, mm-hmm. I was I was nervous. Truthfully, <laughs> I was like, people are gonna think I'm crazy. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna, you know, people are gonna ban me from certain things. They're gonna, you know, it's it's so. But the thing was, I was saying to myself, like, the truth of the matter is, is that what happens is that I I, I get like ninety percent of the emails that I get from dudes, um, talk ask me about like how to date multiple women and all this other stuff because okay. a lot of guys go through a stage where they want to, you know, um, you know, date girls, have sex with girls, and all this other stuff. Oh, and so the book, yeah, so the book, you know, it teaches guys how to do that and how to do it correctly, where you're not, you know, getting yourself into situations where you're getting a whole bunch of girls pregnant, where you're getting STDs, you know. So because right. that's you know a serious issue. So it's kind of like letting you know, like, hey, this is what you do. This is how you do it correctly. This is how you make it happen. And it's you know so like a step by step thing. And you know, and even why I'm so proud of that book is because that book is. Uh, you know, a physical representation of what I what I I stand for as far as standing in your truth. Because, like I said, mm-hmm. you know, the 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 this the the nervousness that I felt by putting that out was an indicator of why it was so necessary for me to put it out. You understand what I'm saying? Right, really. Because that feeling, like, oh, this is you know, this is something that you know is 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 honest. It's mm-hmm. honest. It's an honest thing. You know what I mean? And I think that you know, the more that people or you know just people as a whole as we become more honest with ourselves it's easier for us to you know be honest with other people and then also it it becomes easier for those people to be honest with themselves and be honest with other people like i was actually having a, a a conversation with my wife the other day and we were talking about you know how honest should you be with someone you're in a relationship with because right. you know a lot of people might you know be scared to be you know fully honest with the person Mm -hmm. and the thing with honesty is that not only do you you know in in order for honesty to work it's not just about you being honest but it's also about the person receiving the honesty being able to receive the honesty you understand and and that's and that's the part that is that's why it's hard for most people to be honest because you know a person might say you know hey you know i want to tell my wife or my husband or my boyfriend or girlfriend or or this person or that person even just a friend or whatever i want to be honest with them but then you know that if you are honest with them, they're going to kind of flip out or go crazy or, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they're not going to be able to take it. So the thing is what, what I teach is, you know, from the beginning, when you have a relationship with people, like any type of relationship, friendship, you know, romantic relationship, whatever it is, is to start out the relationship honest and open with the person so that they know that this is going to, this is setting a precedent for honesty in the relationship. You understand? Because we're living in a world where, everybody's lying to each other. You understand? Mm. Like all the time, you know what I mean? And there are times where it might be necessary for you to tell a lie. Like if somebody has a gun to your friend's head and they say, Hey, tell me such and such or else I'm going to shoot him. You know, a lie might be important in that situation for your friend not to get shot in the head. You understand? So I'm not saying just be honest, you know, in every city, you know, there's always exceptions, but you know, generally what I'm saying is, you know, it's, it's better to be honest because the thing about lies is when you lie to someone, you're you're messing with their reality. You understand? Mm-hmm. And you're messing with their 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 ability to make a, a an informed decision because in order for you to make an informed decision, you're making an inform you're making a decision based off of what you're presented. And if you're presented a lie, you're making a decision based off the lie and not what's really going on. And so mm-hmm. it's 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 almost a, a it's really a form of respect. Like it's saying, I respect you enough to let you know what's really going on. So that you can make an informed decision on what's going on here for yourself. You understand? And oh, I yeah. think that's the part that is missing in a lot of relationships and why it's, you know, people have, you know, relationships that aren't so so beneficial is because everybody's going back and forth lying and not really being honest with each other. And then so we're making all these decisions based off of deception and, it, you know, it just doesn't it doesn't flow well. You know what I mean? Right. And that's just a, a lot of, a lot of nonsense. And that reminded me of what you were saying there, you know, a couple of years ago. Uh, I used to live in, in, in Philadelphia, and w- when I was there, I think somehow I came across uh, the book by Neil Strauss, you know, The Game, and I read that, right. and, it, and it was talking about that too, and, and it paralleled a lot with probably what you do as a life coach, and then also when you're when you're coaching other people about that at the onset of the relationship, you kind of need to set like 
you know, not necessarily boundaries, but right. uh, setting the expectation because when, when no expectation is set, and mm-hmm. maybe you can correct me, then there's then there's really no no structure there for that relationship on, on how it's gonna go and, and that and probably leads to the, the lying and the deceit and they're just not respecting each other because no one knows like how the relationship is supposed to be. Right. And and you know it's the funny part, it's like people people want to, you know, like like tell the truth. You understand? Know yeah. Like I, like people want like it doesn't feel good to to be holding something in because it, it, it does, it just like, you know, there's this thing that's on the back here. It's like oh, this chip on your shoulder. Like, Oh, I, I you know, I, I wish I could tell this person or that person this, and you know, to, to be able to give someone the freedom to feel safe enough to tell you the truth is a gift. Do you understand? It's mm-hmm. something that the per- a person's going to be like, Oh, that, wow. I can actually drop my guard and be myself around this person, which it just feels free. You know what I'm saying? And, and that makes for better relationships because now it's like, you know, you know, like when a person says, you know, or, or a person feels like they can't trust people or they don't trust the person. Right. And that, that, that distrust generally comes just from, you know, just a, a lot of dishonesty that's going around. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, so, but the thing is if a person is like, Hey, you know, this is me, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. And this is what I did. This, you know what I mean? And they're, they're okay with letting, telling you that, you know, it's not even like, you know, you can't trust the person. It's more so you, you can trust per- people to really be themselves. And the thing is, if they're, if they're, if they're being honest and it's easier to have that trust when they're being themselves, because now you're saying, well, I, you know, I trust you to be yourself because I actually see who you are, that mm-hmm. you're actually being yourself now. Like you are literally being yourself because before you weren't being yourself because you can't be yourself in a lie. It's, 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 it's impossible because you are truth. You understand? Right. You, who you are is the truth. Right. But the thing is, is that are you being who you are and you can't be who you are lying? You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's the part, the part, the, the problem that people don't understand is that, you know, it, 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 you're, you're, it's like you either living in truth or you live in, you're living a lie. And the thing is, is that while you're living a lie, it's going to be hard for not only people to trust you, but for you to trust other people because you're going to only you're going to see other people as you see yourself. And if wow. you know you're deceptive, you're going to think other people are being deceptive. You feel what I'm saying? Wow, and you're going to yeah. have that mistrust. You feel what I mean? So mm-hmm. that's how it is. It's just like when someone thinks, oh, you know, somebody might be cheating on their their boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. And they might think that their boyfriend or girlfriend is cheating because they're cheating. They're like, oh, where are you going? Why were you out last night? And there's, you're saying all that because you know that you're also doing that type of stuff. Mm. And so now you don't trust them because you don't trust yourself. You know how you're, you are. It's, it's, you're just projecting how you are. You understand? And that's how it, it really is. You know what I mean? Man, and a lot of people don't realize fast, that. Yeah, that's fascinating because well, I think you just hit on something that I want to repeat it is that you right. said, you know, you are your truth. And I think that's, that's definitely important to remember. And, and you even talked about reality and mindset. Like I didn't even think of it right. that way before no, that, 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 that when, when you're, you know, not living in your truth of who you are, then obviously that's your reality. So right. Then, right. Then you're exactly. just assuming, then you're just projecting that on everybody. Wow. Body, right. Yeah, exactly. Man. That's why you, you, you think everybody's a liar, cheater. This oh, is because that's you, because you, you see the world, how you are, you understand mm-hmm. that's how that's how it really is. And the thing is, you know, even if even if you're honest with yourself, you still know that there's other people who are going to be liars, there's other people who are going to do this and do that. But you don't you you don't like, you know, ex- you don't really come at other people that way because you're being honest. And the thing is, when people see that you're honest, I always say this even on dates when I, people always say, you know, um, what's the best thing to do on the first date or whatever mm-hmm. or a thing to talk about. And I say, you know, it's always good to let your guard down and, and, you know, be a little bit more honest. Always say, tell something embarrassing that happened to you in your life on the first date. Because a lot of times when people are on first dates, they're nervous. Mm -hmm. You understand? They're trying to make a good first impression. So if, if you say something that sounds crazy or funny or goofy that happened to you or, you know, or whatever, a story like that, then the person that you're sitting across the table from that you're dating, they're going to feel more relaxed because they're like, wow, this person who I don't know, who I just met, is opening up to me in this right. way. So now I feel like I can do that too. Like, oh, it, you know, this thing happened to me. So now you're so now it goes from you two being nervous, you two trying to impress each other and 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 you know, put your 
game face on or whatever it is <laughs> to you actually having a actually interesting conversation and letting your guard down and being yourselves in front mm-hmm. of each other that quick. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's that's the, the the part that people don't understand is that that energy you put out there is contagious. It's the same way where if someone's being negative all the time, that negativity is going to rub off you. Mm-hmm. If they're being positive, it's going to rub off, off on you. If you're being honest, if you're being truthful, that's going to rub off on, the, off on you. You understand? Like it's and I see it all the time. Like I I notice even sometimes when I hang out with certain people, you know, I can tell when I'm influencing somebody. Mm-hmm. You understand? I see it. Like there's people that I meet and I talk to and we hang out or whatever, and and then I see that what I'm saying and doing is influencing them because of the energy that I'm bringing to the, to the interaction. But, and also because the energy that I'm bringing is, you know, it's really like, I'm feeling that. Cause okay. even when you're bringing negative energy, you're really feeling that negative energy. And then they feel that negative energy that you're feeling. It's almost like you ever come into uh you know, you're having a good time. You're, you know, at an event or whatever, and somebody could come into the room and not even say anything, but you could just feel the 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 energy coming down like even like oh, if, man. i know oh, i know yeah. like oh, yeah. i know like a lot of people at work you know like you'll be at work and you're having you know you're chilling you know with your coworkers whatever the boss is not in right and then all of a sudden the boss comes in like just <laughs> unexpected and everybody's just like has that look uh, on their face like oh oh it's like, right. you know what i mean like and he has that look you know he about to say something like mm-hmm. oh somebody messed up it's that that energy is real you understand oh yeah so it's like if you're if you're emanating that honest that honest energy and that 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 authenticity with people and with people you're dating, with people you're interacting with, you know, it's contagious and it makes them want to also do that. You understand what I'm saying? So right. it's, it's that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, that that's that's good stuff there. And and you brought up something too that about uh first day and I wanna run this by you too, because like when I would do you know, uh, speeches, right? And what, and the thing that I always say, because you know, people are always nervous when they're doing speeches when they're re- they're really just talking like they normally do. But right. but the thing that I always do when I go up and give a speech is, you know, I you know, talk about, you know, I'm man, I'm actually really nervous and blah blah right. blah, and and just put that put the elephant out of the room at the at the beginning, and then, right, and, right, and then, and then from there it kind of like calms everyone else down because they're already like up on edge expecting to be a certain way but then when i kind of like demystified the fact that oh i'm all all together i uh uh i'm overly confident blah 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 and uh, i'm just serious and straight blah 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 but i say no what's up guys you know i'm i'm actually you know nervous you know this is fun for me to do but i'm gonna be honest with you guys and 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 we're just gonna go with the flow so you know if you have questions throw them out there whatever just to make people feel comfortable and welcome and that right not, right and they, con- they con- right and they connect with that you right. understand because it's because it's real you know mm-hmm. what i mean they connect with that you know what i'm saying because it's like because even like like you're saying even with that example like a lot of times when when a person's on stage and people could tell that person's nervous a lot of times people want that person to do good they're like oh you know they can tell they're nervous and they're like they get you know after they finish what they're doing they give them a standing ovation they clap because they're like okay that person overcame their nervousness because what's happening is the people in the audience they're seeing themselves in that person right. you understand mm-hmm. so they're saying if that was me i would want to do good i would want people to you know be you know uh give me support or whatever so they're gonna do that through that you feel what i'm saying so right. it's like that type of you know energy that goes down you know what i mean so it's, it's like that <laughs> yeah that's good that's good stuff so we're we're coming here towards the end and uh going by really fast there's a lot of a lot of great content that you shared with us today uh two things that i want to ask and then, I, and then i'll leave it up to you to you know where you want to take them but the first <coughs> the first thing is uh you know a call to action you know we talked about awareness and 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 living in your truth what what based off of today could you leave as a you know a call of action for us you know moving forward about you know living in our truth or or just being uh more in tune to who we are right i would say you know the main thing to, to, to understand is, you know, just try to sit with yourself mm-hmm. and, and be with yourself, be by yourself. And sometimes just think, think about, you know, what it is that, you know, you like, what is it that you are into? What are you not into? What do you, what makes you excited? What makes you, you know, want to get up in the morning? Like these questions are stuff that you got to ask yourself because, you know, I, I always tell people that, you know, what you're passionate about and what you're about and who you are is very important 
because you affect the world. Like, mm. you know, people think they're just like, oh, I'm just this guy that works at Walmart. No, you, you're, 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 you're right. who you are and what you're about affects everything. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Don't it? And so, and so, and so, and, and so what, what happens is that you really have to live in your truth. And in order for you to understand your truth, you have to sit with yourself and, and take time to understand who you are. And once you understand that and once you are not afraid to be who you are and then you're being who you are, that's when you're going to, you know, things are are, are, are going to flourish in your life. And not only with your life, but just the, the people around you and, and just in general, like every, everything, you understand? Because even with myself, you know, I have this passion to help people, you understand? Mm-hmm. Right. I have this passion to... To, to, to help people see certain things in different perspectives and and and, and improve their lives and, and stuff like that. So, you know, even myself, I thought, oh, you know, who's going to really listen to me? I'm not really that big. Nobody's going to, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's like I have people every day who who email me and who contact me and they say, oh, my goodness, you know, you helped me out so much with this. And, you you know, this one thing that I heard you say or this one thing that I read about in, in your article, like, it really helped me. So, like, me being in my truth, was able to help these other people. You understand? And that's what it really it was really about understanding like you know your truth, what you're about and what and who you want to be and and that, you know, you know, then you know you'll understand really about being content and being happy with who you are. You understand what I'm saying? That's powerful. Mm-hmm. And I think and I think a lot of people, you know, a lot of the reason why a lot of people are upset, a lot of people are, you know, maybe miserable all the time or just frustrated about certain things is because they're 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 not really fully embracing who they are and mm-hmm. once you fully mm-hmm. embrace who you are and just be who you are and not be afraid to be who you are and live your truth then you'll start to see you know things in a different way you'll start to understand things in a different way and then you'll have a different sort of mind state you understand because it's not really the 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 technically the the outside world that's changing it's your right. perspective on the world that's changing and that's what changes you you understand and mm-hmm. then that's how you affect other people's perspective and 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 stuff and and ac- actually having them see their truth and then that's how the world the world is only changing because we're changing you understand that's right. really all it is mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, yeah. How, yeah. that's how it works yeah. it's like know? it's like it's like you just you know you you started off with with blurry vision in a sense right. and then and then you started becoming aware and then right. now at, just now you're starting to see tiny specks of things being right. differently like stuff right. you, stuff you used to see it's like completely different. It's like, damn, right. that was there the whole time? Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. And I think the problem is people are trying too much to uh, expect the world to change mm. and, 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 re- and not realizing that they're the ones who need to change. You understand? It's mm-hmm. like your perspective who needs to change. It's like you said, like that blurry vision. And then that vision becomes clear. Everything that you're seeing, it's been there. You understand? It's already been there, but you you just see it differently now. You just understand it differently now. And that comes from you working on yourself. It comes from you understanding your truth and understanding what you're about. You understand? Man, that's real. And then the the, the final question, and I'll let you wrap up as well, is I always ask uh, the guests to have on, you know, what would be your definition of, you know, fulfilling life's yearnings? Man, I think uh, my definition for fulfilling life's yearnings, I think, um, would just be to be content with who you are. Mm. You understand? Just be content with who you are. Like, you know, understand that, you know, who who you are is who you are. And it's always, and it's, and it's, and it's constantly, you know, it's constantly changing too, you know, like, you know, one one minute you're you're feeling this way, one minute you're feeling that way, one minute you're about this, one minute you're about that. But just understanding the moment and being content in that moment because that's all we have is the moments. You understand? Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I and, and it's funny because I, I remember I did a video one time where I was talking about you know every relationship that you have will come to an end. You understand? Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is. You know, if you're, let's say you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, y'all could break up and that relationship ends or you'll be with someone for years and that person dies. You understand? So right. all, all you have in between those times are those moments you have, it's just a series of moments. And, 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 and if you're content in those moments, that's, you know, I feel like that's where the happiness will lie. You understand? Like when you understand that, you know, it's really about the now, it's really about the moments, it's really about being content in those moments. And, you know, understand everything's not going to be perfect. Everything's not going to be, you know, 
hunky dory all the time, but understand that there's a you know a, a sort of like a um, a baseline of of happiness and contentment that you can have no matter what's happening around you or no matter what's happening uh, you know in your situation and understanding about being in the moment and being content is you you can fulfill you know your life's purpose and your life's yearnings through that because that's really all we have is that you understand and wow, i think right. it, you know understanding that one thing right there understanding that we have the moment and understanding being just content in that i think that right there you know it, it brings a lot more fulfilling things in your life you know Man, mind blown i'm i'm definitely going to have to go back and listen to this one all over again and because <laughs> this is just so much there and, and, and just so much truth and I can even hear from you uh, talking that, you know, this is, this just, you know, remanates through your body and through your soul and that this is what you truly feel and believe and, yeah, and, and, that, and that's great man. to have someone yeah, on like you who, who is, uh, you know, preaching, you know, doing what they're preaching, uh, if you will, and, and, and living it uh, through and through. So that, that was awesome. Uh, thanks for that you know that great definition of fulfilling life's yearnings and and the other things that you shared as well because that uh, to me this is the the thing I like about the show is that it gives me the opportunity to you know uh, find people around the world who who are you know doing great things where they are and are willing to you know give back and share you know their message as well to whomever they can so I just want to applaud you for that and thank you for coming on. Oh, definitely, man. I appreciate it. you having me, man. I had a good time. Absolutely. And then just final question, just, as, uh, just to leave the floor for you, um, you know, if you want to have people go to your website or any other thing like that, you can um, say where those places are. Oh, definitely. Um, you can hit me up at mrlocario.com. That's M-R-L-O-C-A-R-I-O.com. And if you go there right now, you can get my free uh, ebook, The Magnificent 10 Crucial Dating Tips for Men. That's for the guys. And for the ladies, you have uh, seven highly effective steps to finding and keeping a man. That's a free audio you can get on the homepage. Also, I have a, a membership program for men and women called The Bad Boy and the Bad Girl Membership Program. You get 45 through 90 minute um, audio and video tutorials every month. And for the guys, you can go to badboymembership.com. To join that, and for the ladies, you can go to mrlocario.com and you can click on the members tab and you can definitely check that out. Awesome. Thanks for sharing those and all of those links I will include uh, with this episode's show notes. So make sure you go ahead and check those out. Again, thanks for listening in to Fulfilling Life's Yearnings with Blake Sule. I'm your host, Blake, and a round of applause for our special guest today, Mr. Lucario. It was great having you on and talk soon. All right, definitely, definitely. Take care. Thanks for listening to Fulfilling Life's Yearnings. I want to know what your biggest takeaway is, so please head on over to fulfillinglifesyearnings.com today and click on the show notes link for today's episode, which is located on the homepage, and leave a comment. The show notes page is where you can find the resources mentioned during the show and will be very valuable for you on your own journey. To stay up to date, about what's happening please subscribe to my newsletter subscribe to the show on itunes and while you're subscribing on itunes it would definitely mean a lot to me if you would leave a review to show future potential listeners of fulfilling life's yearnings what you think as your voice helps them decide if fulfilling life's yearnings is right for them now it's in your hands are you ready to fly until next episode Stay in the zone and make today a fly day by taking action on your dreams. All right, now before you click off this video, I need you to do three quick things. First, I need you to click the link below to send me your questions, because if you have any questions, I'll answer them in a video. Two, click the link under that to get my free ebook, The Magnificent 10 Crucial Dating Tips for Men, gives you 10 tips on how to attract beautiful women. And number three, I want you to click the link under that to go to badboymembership.com, where you get 45 through 90 minute audio and video tutorials every month. 
Hey, what's up? It's dating and life coach Mr. Locario. Go to badboymembership.com and master the dating game by joining my Bad Boy Membership Program. In this program, you'll receive 45 through 90 minute, easy to follow, step by step dating advice tutorials that's guaranteed to help you attract, date, and have sex with beautiful women. Join the Bad Boy Membership today by going to badboymembership.com. That's badboymembership.com.